Here we are in here. Channel. This is air. We are in air. We are doing 32 miles an hour. Because the 20 zones are not legally enforceable. Um, nobody has been able to disprove what I've been saying. And the reason they can't is because I'm correct. I I'll certainly the police might stop you, but they can't do anything. They could just blather shite. So I suppose it's just like, because we tend to be law-abiding citizens, that that type of attitude is not... ...acceptable to a lot of people. Um, but, you know, you just ignore the... So this, uh, yeah. So that was Earth, uh, we made it through there, there was no cyclists about today, uh, they must be, don't know what they're doing. We're going to be doing it in order to recreate one of the most remarkable scientific experiments of the war. Is there anything? Uh, there's a car coming. By following this route, by retracing these steps, the hope is that we can shine some light on exactly what happened. Now this extraordinary endeavour wasn't carried out by an individual. Two British commandos were involved. So, I'm not alone. I'm joined by one wetland scientist, Christian Dunn. Hello, yeah, and what a day we have together. It's a beautiful sunny day. What we probably need is a little bit of context. Where are we at this moment? And what's going on in, in the wider world? Yeah, so you have to put yourself back now to 1943. The Allies are preparing for the day. Tens, hundreds of thousands of men will be landing here. From the documents that we can get our hands on, there's one massive glaring issue. Look okay, so here, there's a regime of tipsy to say. Green Jibber, that very good. Bye! The French resistance were able to bring over. Incredible. There was four documents in particular which was really interesting to the Allies. It's believed that one of these documents is dated. 